Welcome, welcome, patrons. Sometimes you just have to take a break from your usual content to talk about a weird little thing. And today's weird little thing is an old request I got from my Patreon donators a while back, and then I'm bringing back from the depths of my work in progress bucket thanks to a Twitter poll. The prompt was simply, latest cosmology. And while we don't really have a lot of it, I do actually really like the concept because I really like space. Um, <laughs> and we're actually also seeing it brought up recently thanks to Dragon Age 4 stuff. So while it will be a short little video, let's talk about what we know on Thetis astronomy. The sun. Um, so this is a bit obvious, but did you know that uh, Th Thetis has a sun? So it seems a lot like ours, so to pretty much parrot what is true for us, the Theta Sun seems to be a yellow star, which is one of the most common types of stars in the universe and should be around its peak in its lifetime. There are some Dalish myths around the sun, that it was the father of Elgernon, and at one point Elgernon actually buried it, but if you want more information on that, I would suggest watching the Elgernon video. The Chantry also uses a sun as its logo, which it calls the Sunburst. Um, I don't actually know why? they use a sun. There's probably something there with a chant of light and maybe the sun represents the maker. Uh, is this, they don't really, I, I haven't seen it written out why they use it. It just seemed appropriate apparently. Now the Avar too also celebrate the rising sun on the winter solstice, which seems kind of, you know, obvious at first that there is a winter solstice, but this also means that the planet Thetis is on, is on a tilted rotation around its sun. Now something to note here is that the Dwarves and Orismar don't actually know that much about the sky, as most have never actually seen it. There is even some dialogue in Dragon Age Origins where the uneducated in Orzammar is amazed that the sun shines without fuel. The moons. Something that might be surprising if you don't read a lot of codex entries is that Thetis has two moons, despite only being able to see one at a time in-game. Further, only one of them has a name that we know, Satina, and for some reason it's considered the second moon. Now, the first moon is, at this point, for all we know, just moon. Uh, we don't actually know if it has a name. Um, and we also don't know which moon is which. In the series so far, we have seen two distinct moons, one smaller in Origins in Dragon Age 2 and one larger in Inquisition. At this point, it's unknown if this is even supposed to be the same moon, or if they actually represent two different moons, or even if, like, the orbit pattern for both moons are, so, like, is it actually impossible to have both moons at the sky at once? Is, for some reason, the big moon just closer and then the other one's far away, so maybe, like, the small moon's actually behind the big moon? And if it is the case that there are two moons, which one is Satina? Frankly, I can't even guess, and I think it's pretty likely that the other moon does have a name and will be named at some point, we just don't uh, have it yet. Now, Dalish legends again also talk about the moon and their goddess Mithal, who made the moon. Now, in this legend, she only made one moon, which to quickly jump into theory, perhaps there is truth to this. Maybe one of the moons was made by the Elven, and if so, which one was it? And was it Satina? Is that why there's only one named moon? The elven made moon was named, and the other one is just... Moon? Now something fairly new about moons is a tweet from Matthew Goldman, creative director on Dragon Age 4. And I kind of want to explain it a bit, because I don't think he means that there's always a full moon and never any other moon phases, mainly because there is imagery and codex entries in the game of crescent moons and quarter moons and other moon phases. I think that this is nothing more than a joking remark on how every single instance of a moon in-game has a full moon, but it is interesting that he acknowledges the small big moon theory and how crazy the tides and Thetis would be. This is also be where I would talk about tides, but to be honest, I uh, don't know much about it and I don't really want to research it because that's about the ocean and not space, so something about crazy tides here. The Eclipse. Wet eclipses aren't rare in the universe and are simply when one object crosses in front of the other in the sky, let's focus on what most people think of when they hear eclipses, when the moon crosses in front of the sun. Now, Earth's solar eclipses are actually quite rare. By a wondrous coincidence, our moon is the perfect size in our sky to cover most of the sun, but keeps the sun's corona, or the sun's outermost atmosphere, still visible. In our own solar system, no other planet has eclipses like ours. So what about Thetis? Let's jump into the theory of the two moons, where one is larger and one is smaller. 
the Inquisition moon is just way too large to be able to see the corona and instead would just blot out the whole sun in the sky. So it would really have to be the Dragon Age Origins moon eclipsing the sun to create this effect. And even then it might not actually work. Although for artistic license, I can't imagine the devs wouldn't make it work like our solar eclipses. I actually had the pleasure of going to see the solar eclipse in America back in 2017 and it was honestly the coolest thing I've ever seen. The world went dim, the birds and crickets began to chirp like it was evening despite being midday, and it seemed like there was a sunset across the whole horizon. And for about three minutes the most magical thing was in the sky, a ring of wisps where the sun had once been. But I digress. I bring this all up because at the moment the fandom is obsessed with eclipses and many are actually questioning why. Well, the main reason is this line from a Dragon Age 2 codex entry called the Emergent Compendium. The whole thing is an easter egg about Twitter and hints to future parts of the game, although not much has actually come true for it yet. It's really just kind of a collection of things that are vague. <laughs> now part of the entry is in code, so the complete deciphered entry is such. Two shadowed spheres among stars, subtitled an eclipse as Fenharel stirred. As more and more imagery gets thrown our way with Dragon Age 4, fans have started to notice a lot of sun themes and that the design behind the new Dragon Age logo looks like it could be an eclipse. As we know Fenharel is stirring, how important will eclipses be in Dragon Age 4? The Stars While in our own world we actually have names for large stars that appear in our sky at the moment, we know of none of these in Thetis. The best we have is from the Astarium quest in Dragon Age Inquisition, which gives us a large collection of constellations and their origins, which seems to mostly come from early Deventer in the Elves. I'm not going to sit here and list them all, as listening to the Codex entry would get you the same effect, so here instead is just images of all of them and their names. There also seems to be a sort of astrology present in Thetis, like it's kind of referenced here and there, although it's never really talked about in depth or really given a name or really any details to it. A Dalish story of a woodcutter does talk about a man who was born under such unfortunate stars that he was named Abelos, or Sorrow in their language. Now, uh, as a side note, I don't actually know if that Abelos is actually related to the Well of Sorrows Abelos. This, the codex actually was from Origins, Abelos Abi from Inquisition. I, we don't, we don't know. The planets? So in the real world, the night sky is filled with static stars, and then just a few moving stars that change position each night. Many cultures noticed this and would name these unusual stars. These would later be identified as planets pretty early in human history. So with all that in mind, one would think that there would be known planets in Thetis. Uh, but despite that, I haven't been able to find a mention of other planets known to Thetis. From banter between Liliana and Ogren, Liliana notes that an older Andrastian belief thought that the sky was a vaulted ceiling created by the Maker to protect the world. However, it brought the world into darkness, so he created the moon and the sun, and made the stars and patterns so man would wonder what they represented. However, the way she talks about this makes it seem like it's an outdated idea, so Thetis likely knows it's a planet. Now the elephant in the room here is that there are a fair amount of in-game assets that do make references to solar systems, mostly in book pages around the series. However, they are almost all stock images about our own solar system and don't really apply to Thetis at this time unless you want to make like a crazy theory of how Thetis is actually Earth and blah 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 blah. But the only thing that could be considered a Thetis view of their own solar system is like this strange item that is both in-game and in the art book. However, it doesn't quite make sense the way you think it would, so it's hard to say this is anything solid. But it is possible that there is another planet that Thetis scholars know about, and it might even have a moon per the strange design of this thing, but like, it doesn't quite make sense. Why are, why are they diamonds? Why are these like, octagon things? I don't, I don't even know. Life on other planets. A little off topic, but I'll likely never get to a video like this again, so I'm just doing it now. But putting aside that there are Krogan heads mounted in Inquisition as just an easter egg and nothing more, are there aliens in the universe of Thetis? I mean, likely yes, but at the moment is unknown to Thetis as it is to us. However, the idea has actually been brought by those in Thetis. One of the Avar you meet in Jaws of Hakon spouts off one of his theories about moon men that made an alliance with Taventer to defeat the Snake Kings. 
While this is played off as more of an Easter egg about crazy conspiracy theories and reads very similar to those in our world, in a world of fantasy, what he says doesn't actually sound as crazy as some of the reality of, of the world, because there's a lot even more wild shit that's actually true. Going back to Mithal making a moon, it could be possible that the elves at one point colonized the moon and did actually ally with Tevinter to defeat the Scaled Ones, of which we know almost nothing about. So, uh, that could actually be true. <laughs> there is also a codex entry in Inquisition that has small snippets of an Orlesian play. One of these plays was written in 452 Black, but mostly lost to time. What is known about it is that it took place in the mysterious city of Demhi, implied to be on another world that also becomes a moon. Although the wording of the entry is a bit vague in that I don't know if it means that there is now a third moon in this play, or that the planet turns out to be one of the two moons in Thetis and you just like don't know about it when you're watching or something like that. Another codex from Trespassers is about a trashy romance novel where it's set in the far future and one of the characters is actually from the moon as well. So, in short, we don't know if there is life on other planets, but it is possible that with the magic of the Elven, there might have been some crazy Outer Thetas colonies that we don't know about. But, as they would have originated from Thetas, I don't really think they count as aliens. Also, I just find it interesting that all these references of, like, moon people and moon colonies only happen in Inquisition. I have not found a single one in any other older media. The Mass Effect Theory. Now, a ton of theories get thrown at me, and one that is actually thrown quite often is that Thetis is in the Mass Effect universe. The main reason for people even saying this is that one of the planets uses the same texture as the moon in Dragon Age Origins. The theory itself starts to get complicated as people talk about what could have caused the giant rift and trying to fit the lore of the planet from Mass Effect into Dragon Age because that would, like, so something about the planet in Mass Effect means that Thetis would actually be the moon of the moon that we see and all that but guys i do have some bad news while it is obviously a reused texture the texture isn't actually made by bioware guys this is literally a picture of mars <laughs> this is mars <laughs> it's just like the side you don't see that often yes that's right this giant rift is called valleys marineris I think, and is larger than the United States of America. So really, the theory should be is how Thetis got Mars as a moon. Also, as a side note, I got like no proof of it, but I'm like 85% sure that the second moon in Thetis, the one in Inquisition, is based on Ceres because it looks a lot like that. But uh, I, it might even be the same texture. Um, but I, I couldn't find a picture of series that like 100% match it and quite frankly I don't have the time anymore to just sit there and filter through pictures of series to find it, but that's my guess. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know about Theta's cosmology. Do silver and green questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at, at Gilderthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gilnon on Reddit. Duress your all.